Hey, check it out. This is my electrical power system PCB for my $1,000 CubeSat. This board just came in. Between my last two videos and this one, I finished the layout of the EPS schematic and I have had this board made. So I'm still working on populating this board because right now it doesn't have any components on it and really doesn't do much. So I have this over here. I have some components that I'm starting to populate and solder on. Still a long way to go, but in the future videos I'll be testing individual circuits of this, making sure that things work as I design them. Oh, and you can find all the design files on GitHub linked in the description below. In this video I'll be going over the, fab over the fabrication details of this PCB, and I'll be talking about how and where I laid out various components on this board. So first of all, I had these boards manufactured from PCBWay that seemed like the cheapest option, and I was actually able to get 10 of these boards for just $52 total, plus like 20 something dollars for shipping. Really, it's essentially $5 per PCB for 10 of them. Really, it, I thought it was a great deal. Uh, I actually had a higher amount I think listed in my earlier videos for how much I thought these PCBs were going to cost, so it's great that they're actually cheaper than I anticipated. While these boards may be cheap, $5 each, to populate one of these is actually going to be more expensive. For reference, I think it's going to cost something on the order of $100 to $150 to fully populate this board. I'll be covering that in more detail in a future video for sure, once I actually have <laughs> most of it populated and ready to go. But really, there's a couple reasons why this board is so cheap. So, well, first of all, being that PCBWay and JLCPCB in China are both incredibly inexpensive to use. Pretty much any other American manufacturer, just from a cursory search, maybe I could, could have found a, a lower price. But it looked like that making something like this would cost, I think, a minimum of like $500 to make 10 of them. It really was just crazy expensive to go with any sort of American manufacturing, which is unfortunate, but what I had to do to get this to be, you know, reasonably affordable, especially for something that's just a prototype at this point. But for specific parameters, um, having this under 10 centimeters, this board is, this board is 85 by 85 millimeters, so having it under 10 centimeters makes it, uh, makes it cheaper. Or this board has four copper layers in it, um, but that didn't really seem to be that didn't really seem to increase the price that much. What did seem to really limit the price was that the minimum hole size uh, is 0.3 millimeters. If you went down to 0.2, that would increase the price dramatically. Also, the minimum track and, and, and clearance, if I had gone down to 5 mils, which is 0.127 millimeters, uh, for the minimum track width and also the clearance distance between tracks, that would have five millimeters would have been way more expensive. I actually think I'm closer to eight mil, uh, which is 0.2 millimeters. There was no price difference between eight mil and six mil, so that's why I put six mil on this manufacturing order. But five mil would have been more expensive, so I tried to steer clear of that. Also, green solder mask was necessary. Uh, the other solder masks solder mask colors from PCBWay weren't any more expensive. It's just that because I had 0.2 millimeter clearances on the pads of this large chip, if I wanted to have solder mask between those pads, all these little pads here, then I would have needed to go with this green solder mask. I wanted, I wanted some sort of matte black finish. That would have been nice because you can see this is really quite shiny, but that's what I had to go with so that's no problem. Otherwise, I really just went with all the default options that I was presented. Selecting this four-layer four board, I was given no choice in going with FR4 TG150, which is pretty much what I wanted to go with anyway. It's just the higher temperature FR4 material for uh, the board substrate. The one ounce copper, that was just the default option. Uh, I think it's one ounce copper on the inner layers too, which is nice. PCB way made manufacturing this pretty easy and pretty cheap as well. So enough about the details, let's look at the actual design. What I have printed out here are the different layers of the board. So I have, uh, I have the front copper, I have inner layer one, inner layer two, and 
than the back side. And this back side is as you're looking through the board, so it's actually it's a mirror image if you were to actually look at the back. Just to drive the point home, I have four layers, four copper layers, and so I divided this up, signal layer on the top or on the front, signal layer on the back, and then I used inner layer one as my power plane layer, and then layer inner layer two was my ground plane, and then I only had through hole vias. So let's talk about where everything is placed on this PCB. So first of all, since this is the electrical power system, I have batteries that plug into this board. So you can see these big mounting holes here, and it might be easier shown on the silk screen layer. So this is the silk screen, and so this is the positive side of the battery. Battery runs across, and then this is the negative side. It ends up looking like this in practice. So this is an 18650 battery. I have these little battery clips, which are pretty nice. And it allows me to pretty thoroughly utilize the space. I found so these would these would plug in into this board and they get soldered in. But this connector allowed me to really utilize a lot of the space because you can see there's a ton of vias that I have underneath here, and I was also able to um, put components real close to here. Um, the nice thing about this sort of connector style, it does not take up much extra room at all. I, I saw that there are some other connectors I could have used that have like big plastic landing ways for the battery to sit in, and that didn't really seem necessary, so I, I, saw, I thought that these clips were really pretty neat. Since, as I found out pretty quickly, this board is absolutely packed with components, and there really is not much extra room for anything else. So looking at the courtyard drawing, so just the outline of all the components, essentially the top side is pretty much packed, and you can see that with the copper layer. We have the batteries here, of course. We have the, um, all these guys, since they look pretty similar. These are all the different current monitors. And you can see that here in the silk screen as well with all the different numbers labeling which current monitor it is. So one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. And then I have, I have another eight of them underneath the board. And then 16 is over here. Let's see, we have on this side, we have the battery chargers. We have, we have the five volt power converter over here. We have the 3.3 volt power converter. We have an ideal diode. This is where you can plug in to some debug stuff, like there's some LEDs here. Uh, down here, there's a whole bunch of solar panel inputs. So that pretty much covers the top. So moving on to the inner layer, this essentially is just a power plane, or where I, I use this plane mostly for power connections. So I talked about a lot of power converters and battery chargers in this area, and a lot of the interconnects for those are done in this uh, inner layer one. I also have a lot of the connections out from the current monitors into the interboard connector, this 40 pin header over here. But yeah, this, uh, this board does have some, or this layer also has just some regular signals in it because I couldn't fit everything on the top or the bottom. So moving on to the inner layer number two, this is really simple. It's just one big flood ground plane and that's it. I was able to keep any signals out of here. Uh, I was close to having to do it, but I was able to make it happen where I did not need to put any signals on this layer. And then here is the back. So on the back we have the microcontroller, which sits underneath the batteries. There are more current monitors over here. So this again is shown easier in the silk screen version, although this is, <laughs> this is reversed at this point. So we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13 and 14 and 15 are all kind of jammed in here wherever I could get them to fit. Um, but they are all there. I was close to having to cut off like either 15 or 16 since I do have extra and spare current monitors at this point. But luckily I was able to fit everything just barely. And on this side of the board I also have the maximum PowerPoint tracker that takes, since these are all different solar panel inputs, it takes all those and creates five volts from it. You can see that I really did, actually didn't put any components on the back of the board on this side since this is underneath all of those, all of these power components and I just really didn't want to put anything under here 
since there's actually a lot of through vias from these big power components, these are just the ground slugs of those components to suck heat away from those parts. So really it ended up being that there was not much space to put anything on this layer. And you can see that on this back, there's just so many vias that come through. There really wasn't any room to put anything over here. And I ended up not needing to put anything over here anyway. Another thing I'd like to note is this is the microcontroller, the STM32 microcontroller. And you can see that on this bottom layer, I have a lot of signals running up and down. And then on the top layer, so these overlay, I have a lot of signals running from the left to the right. Uh, that was a strategy I used to make sure that I could fit all of these interconnecting signals. Um, since a lot of signals over here wanted to go this way and signals over here wanted to go this other way, that way I could fit everything by using this top layer um, for left to right movement and this layer for up and down movement. That made, th that made the routing a whole lot easier. I was stumped for a while until I figured out this routing strategy and then, then I was able to make everything fit. Oh, and one more thing, the CAN transceiver and MRAM are down here as well. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for this video. It was a lot of fun doing this layout um, since I'd never done that before. And I think this board turned out pretty neat. Um, I'll be populating it, soldering on all the components in the next coming weeks. And I hope to make a video soon, another follow-up video with just more uh, testing out all the different circuits, seeing if my designs actually worked uh, from the schematic to the actual physical thing. I still, uh, it'll be tricky to, to solder on all these components. I'm just doing this all by hand. So hopefully, hopefully I can get everything on there and then hopefully it works. I was also able to put this QR code in the silk screen on this PCB. It's just a QR code to this YouTube channel. Let me know if it works on your phones. I was able to get it to work on one of mine, but not the other. Anyway, I think it actually turned out pretty good though. Really, I'm just impressed by the quality of the board that you can get having spent only, in total, $73 on this entire thing. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Stay safe out there, and thanks for watching.